There are events that become pivot points in history. We usually mark the past by the wars we fight, where you hear people talk about things before the war and the world after the war. The after the war world is born out of human struggle and cruelty. Sometimes there are events born out of human ingenuity and courage, like discovering fire, or inventing the internet, or walking on the moon. Sometimes it's a little both. We had no idea what was going to happen and what we were going to do about it, and we had no idea the price we'd pay. There was no plan. There were no lofty thoughts about changing the world. We just did what we thought was right at the time. And I would do it all again, even knowing the consequences. So what does she expect you to do? I'll tell you what she expects me to do. She expects me to get another job, that's what. Doing what? I don't know. It's like somehow it's my fault that the economy's in the toilet. What are you gonna do? What can you do? Hey, what's that over there? What? Oh wow. Meteor. That must be. Look how it's breaking up like that. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to wake those of you who are sleeping, but if you look out the right side of the plane, you're guaranteed a truly spectacular sight that you'll probably never get to see again this close. If I couldn't jump the guy, of course I would choose me. Choose you to get saved? Choose me to get shot. <sighs> really? Yes. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Look at that. What is that? I don't know. So pretty. Make a wish. Sleep? No fatalities. Some debris came down in and around station, but it didn't hit anything with people. An airliner? That's what we think now, but we're trying to confirm that with eyewitnesses. Have you checked with airports yeah, when you're we're checking deflates? nothing yet. Why would someone blow up an airliner over Montana? Why does anyone ever blow up an airliner? Yeah. Are Vernon and the new guy in yet? They're waiting for you in your office. What's his name again? I know you told DeLeo. Me. DeLeo. There's something else, though, that might turn this into a whole other thing. I just got a call saying that hospitals in the area are reporting multiple patients coming in with symptoms consistent with radiation sickness. A dirty bomb? We haven't confirmed that yet. But that's what it looks like? No, nobody really knows what that looks like. We might find out tonight. Get the mayor of station on the phone, tell him there's a quarantine in effect for station, township, and everything within a 10 mile radius. Coordinate with local authorities. We shouldn't wait for confirmation. Do you really feel like taking chances with radiation? But get some feet on the ground to confirm that. But I need you to confirm that. Sir, there are two positive cases of radiation sickness from two separate hospitals. How do you spell that? I just ordered a quarantine for station, township, and everything within a 10-mile radius. One of the cases is from a hospital 30 miles north of the station. I'm going to need a copy of that fast to this office before I can do... Thank you. Uh, sir, a major piece of debris, a piece of a plane's fuselage maybe, crash landed in a wooded area outside of Edmonton in Canada. We're getting a formal request from assistance from your counterpart of the RCMP fax here right now. Good, we're not passing this one off to the Mounties. I've got the governor and the mayor of station waiting to speak with you on lines two and four. 
Vernon, you're going to stay in touch with those hospitals and the station PD. Give them anything they need. Send me updates every half an hour. You, I need you to send me a copy of that fax as soon as you get it in your hands to my phone. Can you handle that? Yes, sir. Call down to the airfield for a car. Agent Larson and I are leaving for Edmonton in 15 minutes. Make it happen. I told you his name was DeLeo. Yeah, I know. I only have so much room at this particular moment, so... You good? Yeah. You? Yeah. Why are we going to Edmonton? Because I'm not going to be the next news media punchline that screwed the pooch on a terrorism case. I'll stay out in front of this thing and show the country that we're actually good for something. How's that sound to you? No argument here. Good. Let's do this right. Yes, sir. Lines two and four. Thank you, Sophie. Mr. Mayor, this is Tom Taylor. We just don't know that yet, sir. And what we do know just isn't adding up to my satisfaction. Just need a little more time to sort... Yes, sir. That's why we're here. Well, I appreciate that, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You'll know as soon as I do. Thank you. Oh. Tom? Jesus Christ. Sorry. No, the, it's uh, okay. I got the deputy secretary pressuring me to announce that we've captured a terrorist. He says it would be politically expedient to do it now before a whole debate on the definition of what constitutes an act of terror starts in the media. And I'm trying to tell him in so many words that I don't want to start counting my chickens. What? He's here. He started yelling at us, I think in Russian, when we got the hatch open. Once we identified ourselves, he shut up, and that's when we noticed he had a pistol in his right hand. He couldn't raise it enough to point it at us, though. I don't know if he would have shot at us, or if he was just scared. Does that kid look like a terrorist to you? I don't know what he looks like. He's stable now. He was extremely dehydrated, malnourished, and I'm running every test that I can think of. He'll live? He's got a good shot. The fact that he's survived uh, all this time under the conditions that he's been living gives me hope that he's got a chance. But he's going to need, I don't know, could be years of rehabilitation. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Frankly, no, I haven't. Uh, the only cases that come close that I know of is severe child abuse, where a child is held hostage in a room or a basement and neglected. It's like he's been living in a cave his whole life. Can he talk? He's sleeping now. He's in shock. Uh, I can't guarantee he'll make any sense when he wakes up. Let me know as soon as he does. Will do. You said he was yelling something when you found him. Do you remember what he was saying? Not really. It was something in Russian, I think. She speaks about 47 languages. Whatever you remember. Something like... Identiforo... something. Nakaroj... Vaistoronia. Nakaroj Vaistoronia. Identifizero Vetsebia could that have been the first part? Yes, I think so. I think that was it. Identify yourself. What about the rest? Which side are you? You said he kept repeating that? Yes, sir. Which side are you? Which side of what? That's what I heard. What does that mean? Are you sure you're translating that right? 47 languages? He was wearing this when we found him. Is that a spacesuit? May I? 
It's clear. Look. Maybe they just haven't sprung for new patches. Does that kid look like he was even born when there was a Soviet Union? Sirs? That's no airliner. No, it's not. I found these in the capsule. Those look like rocks. They are rocks. And we found this. I guess it's also Russian. What is it? I'm not sure. It looks like a page from some kind of flight manual. There's something handwritten on the back. What? That's the most ridiculous story I've ever heard. Yes, sir, we're investigating all the possibilities. It sounds more like someone got their hands on some old Soviet hardware and are using it to perpetrate an attack on the United States. An attack on Montana, sir? Maybe it went wrong, I don't know. All I know is I have sick people in hospitals and a potential public relations nightmare. We have to show we have a handle on the situation. I don't need to remind you that our record on these things hasn't been exemplary of late. With all due respect, sir, I'm not convinced we're dealing with terrorism. All we have is a sick kid, possibly a Russian national. I don't think treating him like a criminal is the best thing. He has thing no identification and piloted a craft spreading radiation over American cities. First thing he does is pull a gun on the people who are rescuing him. Have I got that much right? Yes, sir. All those things are true. Then he's a criminal until we have firm evidence to the contrary. Whatever the case, I want you to take the suspect to an American base immediately and we'll. I don't think that's the best course of there. action at this time, sir. I'd like more time to investigate before we jump to any conclusions. I'm not making suggestions, Mr. Taylor. I want you to move him as soon as you can. Yes, sir. Okay, then. We'll be in touch throughout the day. Yeah? We recovered another piece of the capsule outside Calgary. There was a nuclear battery on board. Looks like that was the source of the radiation. It's in an unpopulated area, so there's that bit of good news. Yeah. What? We're leaving. They didn't believe it either? I don't blame them. It's crazy. It's also the only thing that makes any kind of sense. Sophie, it makes no kind of sense. What do you think? Some Al-Qaeda nut job makes a play for an old Soviet space capsule instead of a nuclear bomb, somehow manages to launch it from a cave in Tora Bora on a mission to scare the bejesus out of Montana. Where's the sense in that? It spread radiation over hundreds of miles. It just seems like a roundabout way to spread terror if terror is your goal. I know. I know. I, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else there is to do. Nothing besides get some sleep. I don't have time for that, and neither do you. We have a sick kid in a hospital bed. He's not a terrorist. He's not a Martian, either. Well, maybe not. What's that? It's a letter from the RCMP allowing us to operate in Canadian territory to Leo sent it over. I asked for this like 12 hours ago. Said he had trouble converting it to a PDF or something. I don't You're know. supposed to be America's first line of defense. The best and the brightest. Which one are you? I've always been the best, but never the brightest. Well, I've always been the brightest, never quite the best. You know, if this whole serving and protecting thing doesn't work out, I think we have a sitcom in our future. I'll make the arrangements. Thank you. This is Taylor. Uh, Mr. Taylor, this is Dr. Bertram. I was the physician when... Yeah, I know who you are. How's he doing? I've just gotten the preliminary blood work back, and he has cancer. Say that again? I'm no oncologist, but his body's riddled with it. I've called in an expert. Slow down, doctor. Get him ready to be moved. He's coming back with us to the States. I don't think that's a good idea. I didn't ask your opinion, and besides that, the decision's already been made. We've been granted authority to operate in this jurisdiction, and whether you like it or not, you answer to me. Do you understand that? Yes. Anything else I should know? He's developed a respiratory infection. He's not responding to treatment. If you put him on a plane, you could kill him. And this is your professional opinion? 
What other opinion would it be? I'm sorry. He's coming back with us. He'll receive treatment in the States. Get ready to move him. Yes, sir. How'd you know it was me? That caller ID, like the rest of the world. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, I was just about to play my round of golf. Like I did yesterday, like I probably will tomorrow. Sounds like the life you always wanted. It's not. Yeah. Sorry I didn't make it to that dinner I read about in the paper. Congratulations. Thank you. That's not why you called. Yeah. No. Messy business up there. Please, tell me you haven't called for a pep talk. Yeah, not exactly. Then what? I got golf to play. Yeah, well, this may seem a little strange, but uh, I need your insight on something. <laughs> My insight? Yeah. Just how crazy were the Soviets? I mean, just how crazy were they? You know. You were there. <laughs> I was a kid. I wasn't on the front lines like you. Well. I never put anything past them, I'll say that. Never. Oh. Some people thought we were a bunch of paranoid fear mongers in the agency, but oh, the stuff we learned after the fall, Jesus. It was a crazy time then. Hell, we were crazy too, but they were crazier. I really mean that. Did you ever hear of a guy named Stanislav Petrov? No. Me neither, not until about 10 years ago. Stanislav Petrov was uh, in the Soviet Air Defense Force, and. He was on duty in a bunker just outside Moscow one night in 1983. His job was to monitor OCO, the Soviet early warning system, kind of like our NORAD. They had a network of satellites up in orbit, just like we did, to alert them if the US launched their missiles. Anyway, old Stanislav was on duty, eating his day old bread, drinking his vodka, whatever they did. He saw something he'd never seen before. Big board lit up all red and alarms going off, blaring. <laughs> what it was telling him was that the U.S. had launched their ICBMs, their, their nuclear ICBMs at his country. His job in that event was to fire his country's missiles back but he didn't. He didn't believe it. For some reason in his gut, it just didn't feel right. So he ignored all his orders and all his training, and he turned the alarm off. To make a long story short, the sun was bouncing off some clouds or something or other, and confused the satellite into thinking the missiles were on their way. Stanislav Petrov had done what he was supposed to do. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And you know what happened to him? Discharged. Dishonorably. Probably sent to Siberia or somewhere, who knows. Man defied his country and saved the world. Quite literally saved the world. And he faced the consequences. Because 
I think he had something the rest of his country didn't. Imagination. He could imagine the consequences of following his orders. And those consequences were unconscionable to him. And that's how crazy they were. Does that about answer your question? I guess so. Anyway, it was sweet of you to call an old man for his advice, Tom. It really is. Get out there and do a job, will you? Yes, sir. Next time you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm not really much of a golfer. Me neither. <laughs> Take care, Frank. You should be more concerned with taking care of yourself right now. But. Get our people up here. As little as possible. We need to give them something. They're sniffing blood in the water. Otherwise, they're just going to run whatever they can find. He's right. We can say Why don't we just say that a Soviet satellite, an old Soviet with satellite, a nuclear battery on board. came yes. down just like it did? Can you work with that? Yes. Great. Put something together. Give it to the press. All right. That takes care of the press. Now, what about... Don't you? worry about that. Don't worry about it? Leo, do you still have that fax? Yes, sir. Bury it. You never got yes, it. Yes, sir. The right answer is what fax? Yes, sir. What are you doing? I believe the technical term is gumming up the works and buying some time to investigate before we end up shipping that kid to a federal prison. Jesus Christ. Can we get a cup of coffee around here that tastes like coffee, please? Send someone to uh, Willie Horton's or whatever they have up here. Get some for everyone, will you? We need an expert in here, someone who knows what they're talking about, and quietly. An expert? On what? It's open. Yes. Zachary Walzer. Dr. Zachary Walzer. Can I help you? Dr. Walzer. Tom Taylor. Sorry about all the, uh... I know this may seem a little I strange. I think I know what this is all about. You do? That dirty bomb thing. That wasn't a dirty bomb, was it? No, it was actually. Funny thing about that downed satellite story. What's that? Well, I heard about it on the news this morning and couldn't help but feeling like I'd heard it somewhere before. So I did a little googling and in about two minutes found this. Apparently, a Soviet satellite carrying a nuclear battery made an unplanned re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and spread radioactive waste all over Canada. That's right. Look at the date. That article's from 1979. Two Soviet satellites accidentally coming down, spreading radiation all over the same part of the world? That's some bad luck, don't you think? Maybe you should do a little more research before you put out a bogus cover story. As I can see, you've already gathered. We're in a bit of a situation here that quite frankly, is a little outside of my area of expertise. I don't doubt it. Good. I understand you're some kind of space buff. I have a master's in aeronautics and astronautics and a PhD in nuclear engineering. There you go. I've also written three books on celestial mechanics and manned space flight. Two planets, one future, and a case for the red planet. What's the third? It's due out this fall. It doesn't have a title yet. What, what exactly do you have going on here? I'll need you to sign a confidentiality agreement before I can uh, tell you anything. You'll forgive me if I'm a little hesitant to do anything you say or sign anything. You're the ones who made it more of an ordeal to travel from Seattle to Cleveland and to fly to the moon. It doesn't exactly instill confidence. I'm trying to protect the American people. And what a bang-up job you're doing with that so far. Fact is, we're in a bit of a spot here, and we could use someone with your knowledge and expertise on this. If it's not you, it'll be someone else. What could you possibly want with someone like me? Imagination, Doctor. 
Don't tell me it's extraterrestrial. Really, I will turn around and walk right back out that door. No, it's actually a little weirder than that. Theoretically, is it possible for someone to survive on Mars? Absolutely. For years on your own with limited resources? Well, sure, I've written a lot about this. It's called the living off the land approach. Like the pioneers that settled the western United States. All the elements for survival are there on Mars if you know how to extract them. It's surviving the trip there that's the hard part. You've got a million kinds of background radiation, cosmic rays, solar flare activity, and nine months without a gas station to stop at if you get a flat. What's happened to this man? That's what we like you to tell us, Doctor. This is your Martian pioneer. What? The Soviet satellite wasn't a satellite. It was some kind of capsule. We found him inside. We also found a note. If it's to be believed, it was written by a Soviet cosmonaut who claims to have been living on Mars since the mid-80s. According to the note, this is their child. Wait, wait, slow down. Hang on. You're really saying seriously that this man has been to Mars? We're saying he was born there. How is that possible? That's what we'd like you to tell us. Dr. Walzer, are you all right? Do you know what this means? I know, it's a little insane. It's incredible if it's true. I've spent my whole life making the case for the human exploration of Mars, Mr. Taylor. And this whole time, my God, I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me. This is all, I'm sorry. Will you help us out, doctor? Absolutely. Dying. Cancer? Cancer is the least of his problems. He's having a reaction to something. They can't figure out what. You're the Mars guy, aren't you? They've got the Mars story. Where'd they get it? Wouldn't reveal our source. Has anyone bothered to call the Russians? We're not there yet. Your operation is a violation of Canadian sovereignty. You do not set policy for this government on your own. Tell me what's going on inside your head. I think we're out of time here.
half ago, we were dealing with an emergency situation, the size and the details of which were yet to be known, and our men and women acted accordingly and properly and within the bounds of the law. Suppose this guy actually did come back from Mars. How do we cover ourselves? There was a request made to our Montana office, and our agents responded to it. The Canadian government is behaving responsibly, the way it should when lives are at risk. So the bad news is that we have a leak, and the good news is that nobody believes the real story is real. Correct. This is a strange day. When things fall out of the sky, they don't care about borders or sovereignty. The danger is indiscriminate. And it is precisely because of the relationship between Canada and the United States that we were able to respond as quickly and effectively as we did.